Hi, I'm Shen Yen. I am one of the math instructors at Blue Tens Online. I teach AP Calculus AB and AP Calculus BC. This is a short video to show you what uh, taking a calculus online class with me will be like. And I will be showing you around the Moodle classroom, the enhanced web assign platform where you will be accessing your weekly assignments and your e-textbook, as well as some of the resources that are available online for us to use throughout the year. Let's get started. This is the Moodle classroom where the students will be able to access the content of the entire class for AP Calculus AB and AP Calculus BC. So for this particular demo, I am showing examples from my AP Calculus BC class. So as you scroll down the page, you will see that the content of each week is listed um, where you know the chapter, the topic, and the particular section that will be covered in each week. And as you click on a particular week, it takes you to the content specific to that particular week. So here we are, we are at week five, um, where um, every Monday as I open the classroom, the students will have access to a brief intro to the upcoming week. So for instance, in this week, we will be learning about applications of derivatives, um, related rates, and Newton's method. They also have a quiz in this particular week. And um, they also have a unit one FRQ, which is the free response question. So you'll notice that as early as week five, I start bringing AP style questions. Um, in this particular case, the, um, the FRQ is the free response where the students have to write out uh, their response to a particular math question. Um, the AP exam is fairly particular about how those questions need to be answered as each point is doled out for a particular uh, for specific answer. So I want to train the students um, to be able to respond in the way that the AP exam requires them to. They also have uh, access to their assignments. And um, in the beginning of the week, the students will have access to the recorded lessons. There's going to be a video lesson for the particular sections as well as notes for that particular section. I also open a discussion forum where the students can interact with each other and with me. Um, uh, and ask questions about the particular topic that we discussed, or if they have encountered a problem on their homework, they can also bring it up during the discussion forum. They have their quiz, and um, the College Board has opened an AP classroom that has a lot of resources for the teacher and the students, and I try to bring in practice problems from the question bank from the College Board AP classroom for the students to practice. Now, later in the week, by Friday, hopefully the student would have done some of their homework, if not all their homework. And during the problem session, they have an opportunity to bring their questions to the classroom um, so that I can help them with it. Their classrooms can also, their classmates can also help them um, with solutions. And I sometimes bring interesting problems related to the topic that we are discussing this week to teach them problem solving techniques. I upload the video and the notes at the end of each session so that if you, for whatever reason, were not able to make the class, um, the student can always watch the video afterwards. Now, since the AP exam has a calculator section and a non-calculator section, um, the calculator use is actually a very important part of the class. So for each chapter, I will uh, post calculator notes to help the students learn the calculator skills that are related to each chapter. Now, my preferred calculator is the TI Inspire, um, but I will post notes for both the Inspire and the TI-84 calculator. Okay, so very quickly on the right hand side, I usually post a little math joke for the day. It's never a bad idea to start the week with a little bit of humor. Then they have uh, this uh, link that 
helps them, that directs them to the web assigned, which is the platform where they will be accessing their assignments and their e-textbooks. Here is the Zoom link where they will be accessing um, their video conference uh, classroom for their Friday problem sessions. Here is a little quick access to their assignments, their forums, their quizzes, and other resources. And here there's always a reminder for what is coming up for them. For instance, my class has a chapter quiz that is due today at um, five minutes before midnight. You also have um, access to who else is online with you at the time. And here um, is a link to the student's AP classroom and their College Board account. This is the web assign platform where the students will be able to access their homework and their textbook. When the student opens their account, they will be taken to their class and they will be shown their assignments for the current week and for the upcoming week. Let's go to a particular homework assignment. This homework assignment is for section 8.8 .8 for Power Series. I wanted to point out some of the features that are pretty unique to this particular textbook that we have chosen, Calculus for AP by Larson. So you will see that as the student is doing this particular problem, if uh, he or she is having a difficult time figuring out how to solve this, the first option is to read the particular section in the textbook. So when you click read it, it takes you to the link on Cengage and the specific section in the textbook that talks about the problem um, that is related to the section. The second option is to watch a video. I will play a short snippet of this video, but you'll get the idea of how WebAssign provides an additional resources for the student as he or she is working through um, the homework assignment. I also want to point out that if after reading the section and watching the particular video related to this problem, the student still wants to practice another version so that he or she can be sure that uh, this particular type of question is understood, there's the option of practicing another version of this exact same problem. Now, a last feature is a master it. The master it is available for questions that are a little bit more involved. As we click on the master it, you'll see that for this problem, the student is taken through a three-step process for solving this particular problem. So instead of the student relying on his own skills to do this problem, he or she will be taken through a step-by-step -step process for how to work on this problem and therefore master this particular concept. One of the most important applications of derivatives in calculus is in finding related rates. For example, we have here the example of a conical tank. It is an inverted cone and it's a very classic calculus problem. It is, its physical dimensions are R and H and Initially, the tank was full of water, and the water is leaking out of the tank at a given rate. Now, you can see as time progresses, as the volume of the water inside the tank decreases, R and H both decrease with it. So we can say that both the volume of the water, the volume of the water is a function of time, and the radius of the remaining cone, the cone of water inside the reservoir, changes as a function of time, and the height of the water is also changing as a function of time. So we know that the volume of the inverted cone is related to its radius and its height by this equation. So we can actually differentiate implicitly with respect to time to obtain the related rate equation. So notice how in our original equation, um, the relationship with time is implicit. So now we have, let's write 
it out explicitly so that you can see that relationship. So the volume is related to its radius, which changes as a function of time, and its height, which also changes as a function of time. So if we are to take the derivative of the volume to investigate how the volume of the water changes as a function of time, we take the derivative and here we have the product of two functions, both of which are changing as a function of time. So we need to use the product rule. So here we are, we take the derivative of the first function, which is two RT. And now we actually apply the chain rule, DRT DT. Now we are going to just keep the second function as dictated by our product rule. And now we add the first function times the derivative of the second function, which is just the rate of change of the height as a function of time. Okay, so now notice how in this equation we have a relationship of how the rate of change of the volume relates to the rate of change of the radius and the rate of change of the height. Now let's solve an inverted comb problem. So given an inverted comb, we have that its physical dimensions are a height of 20 centimeters and an initial opening of eight centimeters. So the tank is initially full of water and as time goes by, we have that the water level drops because there's a leak at the bottom. So there's a leak. And the water level drops, which means that the height and the radius of the remaining volume of water also changed. So this is going to be the R and the height at a particular time T. So the problem tells us that the water leaks at a rate of 15 centimeters per second, which means that the change of the volume of the water is going to be a leak. So we give it a negative sign, 15 centimeters per second. Okay, so we're being asked for the rate that the water level is falling when the water is halfway down the cone. So if its initial height is 20 centimeters, that halfway down the cone, then it is at h is equal to 10 centimeters. We're being asked, when the height of the water is 10 centimeters, what is the rate of change of the height? Okay, so the first step is always translating the problem and drawing a picture that illustrates the geometry of the problem. Now let's go into the calculus. So we know that when we start, we have that the volume of the cone is equal to pi over three r cubed, I'm sorry, r squared times h. And notice how here we have two variables, the radius and the height. Um, but the question, the problem statement asks for the rate of change of the water level when the water level is uh, equal to 10 centimeters, which is halfway down the cone. So we want to rewrite this function as a function of h only. So let's go back to the geometry of our original problem. Here we draw the cone. And initially, when the water is at the top, we have that the radius is a centimeters and the height is 20 centimeters. At some time later, the radius is going to be r and the height will be h. So let me make that very clear by drawing this second triangle. So now if you look at the larger triangle and the smaller triangle, you see that we have a similar triangle relationship, which allows me to write this equation. r is to 8 as h is to 20 which means that r is equal to eight over 20 h or two fifths 
h. Okay, now let's use this relationship between the radius and the height and plug it back into our equation. So now we have pi over three, two fifths h squared times h. That gives us four h over three times 25. I will not multiply it back in. Let me just write it uh, in factor form, h cubed. Now implicit in this equation is the fact that both the volume and the height are functions of time. So the volume is a function of time and the height is a function of time. Now we are looking to see how the rate of change of the volume is related to the rate of change of the height. So now let's maybe make that a little bit more explicit by writing our equation this way. We want to find the rate of change of the volume, which is a function of time, by taking its derivative. So now let's take the derivative of h cubed. So then that is going to be the power rule, which is um, 3 times h of t squared. And now we apply the chain rule, which is dh of t, the rate of change of the height as a function of time. So now this equation relates the rate of change of the volume to the rate of change of the height. We want to investigate what is the rate of change of the height of the water when h of t is equal to 10 centimeters. Basically at the instant, the height of the water is 10 centimeters. So let's simplify here. And now we have four pi, 10 squared is 100 over 25. And this simplifies to four. And we have the rate of change of the height of the water with respect to time. And this is equal to the rate of change of the volume of the water with respect to time. Now, we are given the rate of change of the volume with respect to time at the very beginning of um, the problem statement, and we know that that equals to negative 15 centimeters per second. Now we have all the pieces that we need to solve for the rate of change of the height as a function of time, and that is equal to negative 15 over 16 pi centimeters per second. Since calculator use is an important part of the AP exam, I will walk the students through calculator tutorials to help them learn to use their calculator. This is a simulator of the TI Inspire CX CAS, and this is the teacher software, and it emulates the handheld calculator that the students have. So for our demo, we are going to open a graph window, and we are going to graph the solution to a differential equation. So let me open up the menu. Here we have the first window, which gives us many options. And what we want to do is to graph a particular function. And the particular function that we want to graph is a differential equation. So it opens a different window where it allows me to graph the slope of the equation. And in a differential equation, the slope of the function is itself a function of the variable x and the function itself, which in this case is y1. So let me show you what the slope field for this particular differential equation looks like. Here it is. Here you have the general solution to the, to the differential equation that we just entered. Now let's go back and give it a initial condition. So we are going to give it the initial condition of 0, 1 which means that our particular solution will pass through the point zero, one. Okay, so here it is. This red curve is the particular solution to a differential equation that satisfies the condition where the initial condition is zero, one. Now, most of the time, the student will be required to use the Euler's method to approximate the solution to a differential equation. But since the calculator itself uses Euler's approximation to generate this curve, we can actually use the, the results 
to find each successive approximation by using our trace function. So if we trace the graph and we start with our initial condition, which is 0, 1, then if we are to find the solution to the particular solution at x is equal to 1 using step sizes of 0.1, that means that each step size, as we step through step sizes of 0.1, we are going to get the solution to a particular um, differential equation with each successive approximation. So you can see that the y value is changing as we step through to 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and all the way to point, uh, 1.0. And this is going to be the 10th iteration of successive Euler's uh, approximations to the differential equation. So the calculator actually does it really quickly. Um, and if there's a question on the calculator section, this will be the best way for the student to find the solutions to the Euler's approximation.